So as we approach this Christmas season, we just want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas from our church family to you. And we just want to have you join us for these Christmas services and just be blessed because um, the reason we are here is because Jesus sent his son to be born in a manger for us. So we just pray that you be blessed this Christmas season and that you would have an amazing Christmas. Come let us worship our King, come let us bow at His feet, He has done great things. See what our Savior has done, see how His love overcomes, He has done great things, He has done great things. Oh, he In your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You've been faithful. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. Yes, you have. And I know you will do it again, for your promises, yes and amen, you will do great things, God, you do great things, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you freed every captive, you break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. In your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, let's sing together. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive, break every chain. Oh, God. Have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Oh, 
the Lord. Sing the choirs of angels. Sing in exaltation. Oh, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, come let us All right, so we are going to roll the announcements right now. So get out your pen and paper and jot these down. They're going to roll through the screen rather quickly, but we just want to make sure that you guys are in on all of the things that we're doing through the churches. So we just want you to write those down so that you can keep those dates on your calendar. Well, good morning, and uh, I, uh, this is week four, uh, my last of this series on Christmas Plus, and the sort of the unwrap gifts, and we've unwrapped three gifts already. Um, we unwrapped, uh, first I think it was growing in wisdom, and that we can grow like Christ in wisdom, and uh, secondly we talked about temptations and uh, how Jesus endured them, and how we can, and uh, I think we took a little different approach with temptations. We said that, um, that we needed to uh, hold on to our confession and draw near uh, to God, and then we talked uh, last week about suffering, and I didn't speak in person uh, last week at all, but suffering is one of the unwrapped gifts that we are going to suffer. And so um, I guess today we are, uh, we're still looking at the importance of Jesus' humanity and how it applies to our everyday life. And so um, I guess uh, I would like to ask this question today is, uh, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, that's a big question that, I mean, people are asking their kids that. Uh, they're asking friends and different uh, family members uh, what they want uh, for Christmas. And uh, whatever it is, uh, there is one wish, say, and um, one request that should be on the top of probably every Christian's um, list. And uh, especially if we want to live in this world. 
right, and have an effect or a power. And so there's one essential gift that's really, really important. And so I want to read today. I want to read from Luke's gospel. If you have your Bible, Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 13. 9 to 13. I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. I want to keep reading down to verse 13, okay? It says, now suppose one of your fathers is asked by his son for a fish. <coughs> he will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Right? Imagine now, like, these are dark gifts, like a snake or a scorpion. Right? Okay? But listen to what it says in verse 13. If you then, be an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, and this is where I want to, uh, to base my entire sermon on today, how much more will your heavenly Father, listen to this now, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. And so what do you need for Christmas? What's on your list? I mean, there's all kinds of different things that we need for our lives, right? Whether it's uh, strength to face the, the, the strain of life, whether it's strength to go on or power to, uh, like, overcome some of the sin or power to change. It doesn't matter what it is, right? If we truly picked up our Bibles and we took a good look and we ask the question, how do I experience my life? I want you to know that men and women need to be living in the supernatural power of the Lord. We really do. And the disciples saw this power in Jesus' life, and uh, they continued to ask him. I mean, they thought maybe the secret was that Jesus had a prayer life. And, and so, so they begin in chapter 6, they were saying, like, Lord, teach us how to pray. And, and, and give, listen, don't get me wrong, I think that prayer is definitely important, and I think it's part of what we need to do. But I want you to know that Jesus gets right to the source at the end. And what we really, really, really need is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the unwrapped gift, the thing that's undiscovered sometimes is the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the same gift that was available to the disciples is available also to you and I. It really is. And what he wanted his disciples to know, and what he wants us to know, is that that spirit is available. It really is. And so, um, so the gift of the Holy Spirit, the unwrapped gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus is talking about here is absolutely needed today. It is necessary, honestly, for our everyday life. Look at the examples that he did. I mean, like the children is uh, not asking for a toy here. He's asking for, or, or, or not asking for a stuffed animal. But it's funny if, if a son comes and asks for some kind of food. So Jesus wants us to see something here. Like when it comes to the necessaries of everyday living, whether a fish or an egg or, or something. 
Everyone knows that food is a necessary when it comes to the source of strength and power. And everybody knows that without it, each and every one of us would go hungry. And this is like a universal, um, universal principle here in, in the sense of our physical lives, right? In order for us to get like physical strength and power, we need food. Well, the Holy Spirit is the source of food that you and I need. Now, get, don't get me wrong. The Word of God is our food for our souls, but the Holy Spirit gives us the spiritual strength and the power that we need. And, and Jesus left us with the impression here that without the power of the Holy Spirit, you, you're, you're not you without it. That's what He intended for his church. There's one thing to say that I'm a believer or I'm already a Christian, but I'm telling you that we need to also say that we're filled with God's Spirit. And so let me say this today. What do you want for Christmas? We need to ask the question, is it, have I asked God for his Holy Spirit this year? Right? Because it says the Heavenly Father will give us the Holy Spirit if we ask. It is true that every believer has been once and for all regenerated by the Spirit. Every believer has been sealed by the Spirit. We can be baptized or indwelled by the Holy Spirit. But we need to be continually filled by his spirit also. When Paul was writing to the Corinthians, uh, I think it was chapter 5, or chapter 5, verse 18, do not get drunk with wine. Why, we're doing a lot of that these days too. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Boy, I want to say that and preach that today for all those that uh, don't mind sipping. The question is, uh, I mean, do we, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not going against maybe having a, having a, a beer or a drink or anything like that. But I'm telling you, one of the things that ought to be pressed into our lives that we've asked God, fill me with your spirit. Oh no, Roger, he sent the spirit, we're all filled. No, the Bible says we need to ask that we would be filled with his spirit. How do we get it? How do we get this gift? I think you need to believe, right? Uh, all right, dads, how many of you, when your kids ask for a basic thing like food, would give them a bowl of snake? Right? Right? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Right? If you who are evil or sinners or imperfect, if you know how to give good gifts, like if you would give them that fish, if you would give them what they need, perfect pure Father in heaven will give us the Holy Spirit. He, he, he's really wanting to like raise our faith. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We really do. He's trying to convince his disciples that the power is is not only available, but God is more than willing to, to make it available for each and every person. How do we get it? Well, I think we need to pray. The Bible says here that ask for it. And so, so we, like this Christmas, like it was one thing to say, what do you want for Christmas? Well, ask God, how much more will our Heavenly Father give it to us if we ask? Are we asking God for the Holy Spirit? And let me ask you a better question. Let me ask you this question. Better question altogether. Why don't we ask? That's a question, isn't it? Why don't we ask for the Holy Spirit? The answer is probably pr pride, 
we are so trained in our Western culture, right, to, to ask for help is a sign like of weakness. But really, uh, we need to remember what the Lord said to Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And so what did Paul learn here? Paul learned that when he's weak, then I am strong. That's a powerful word right there. So we need to resist pride. We truly do. And we need to give grace, right? Uh, and, and, and to be humble and to receive it and ask the Lord, God, I need your help by your Holy Spirit. So true right here. Right? It's, it's a powerful thing. Remember when Jesus in John chapter 4, and uh, after he walked about 80 miles, tired, thirsty, and hungry, and he comes to the Samaritan woman, and he loved her, and he told her that he was the Messiah. But that time his disciples came back, and they said to him, you've got to heat if you, if you need to keep your strength. You've got to heat. And he said, I've got food to heat that you know nothing about. You see, he was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. That's a powerful story. It really is. I want to talk about one more thing, and then we're going to close. Because we need to obey. We truly do. Uh, here in uh, 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 Jesus in Luke 4, being filled with the Spirit before he was tested and tempted in the wilderness, and he overcome the temptation. But he told, he returns in the power of, of the Holy Spirit. You see what happened? The same thing that when it comes to like asking for prayer, that we can be empowered more and more when we just yield our lives to the Spirit. There is a blessing in obedience. There truly is. Have you obeyed? If you obeyed what the Spirit, because I tell you that in the midst of us obeying, there's this surge of spiritual strength and power that will come upon us. It really is. It says that Jesus returned from his temptation, Luke chapter 4. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we go through a lot of stuff, don't we? We truly do. Whatever is going on in our lives, we need to trust God and that we would. I want to conclude now. So let me, let me go through what I did this morning. We need to believe. We truly do. That the Holy Spirit is able to give us what we need. We need to pray. And we need to obey. To walk in the power of the Spirit. This gift is available. It's like, guys, it's never at a stock. I heard somebody went uh, shopping and um, everything that they needed was not there. Well, this is not out of stock. This gift that you don't um, ask for is well in stock. It truly is. And my heart today is, may you receive it now. I'm going to pray for you in a second. Today, may the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you. And may you ask this Christmas, what do I want? I want God's Holy Spirit to give me strength and power. Can I pray for you? Let's do that right now. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the folk that will watch this little talk online. I pray today that the power of your spirit would overtake them, that the strength that you provide will be up on them. I pray, God, that the gift that right now in their minds that they haven't asked for, they will ask for your Holy Spirit. And, God, you will give them what they need. Just like earthly fathers that was asked for a fish, a source of, of strength that it would bring. Just as earthly fathers would do any gift that would be the essentials of life, how much more 
you care for the folk that are listening to this online today. Father, give them your gift, I pray, in Christ's name. God bless you today, and may the Lord keep you and shine upon you, and may he fill you with his spirit. So this Christmas, what do you need to live out your life? What gift is already unwrapped that you could live out your life today better, easier, more successful? May you receive the Holy Spirit, I pray in Christ's name. God bless you.